Good morning, friends. Hi. I hope y'all are ready to talk about the lonely life of a blogger. <laughs> I promise it won't be as suppressing as it sounds. Let me pull up the chat for you guys. There we are. All right. I moved my bloggy empire sign so now you guys can see it. Isn't that cute? It's been hiding up there this whole time. You guys just weren't able to see it. All right. How's everybody's Thursday? Thanks for coming. So we had, I posted in the group, what are you guys struggling with? And thank you so much to Rebecca for being brave and asking a question that seems to have hit a vein because uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of excitement around this one. So good morning, Paulette. Hi, how are you? Uh, Rebecca said, sometimes it feels a little lonely. No one in real life understands. In-person conferences haven't been a thing in two years and inter internet friends tend to be busy working on their own biz. 100%. Not only, good morning, Trisha. How are you? Hi, Cass. Hola. Oh, you said hola. <laughs> I read that wrong. I like it. I like the hola. Um, not only is it a lonely endeavor in general, but it's been like compounded by COVID-19, right? Definitely. Uh, being the boss in general can be kind of lonely. Like even when you're just like a puny little middle management person in a giant conglomerate, <laughs> it can be kind of lonely just because you're the boss. Uh, being an entrepreneur, even lonelier, and being an online solopreneur, like, forget about it. It's, it's, it can be a very lonely life. Good morning, Rashonda. How are you? Um, as you guys can see, I wrote a small blog post in the description. I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> I was really, I, I'm really glad you asked this, Rebecca. And since you brought it up, I've been thinking about it and I've been thinking about like what, in my experience, what really contributes to the loneliness of being an online entrepreneur and even more than an online entrepreneur, like a blogger in general, right? Because people, people don't get it. How do you make money? What are you doing? And blogger has this like negative connotation, right? That you're just like kind of playing around with your thoughts online you know, like journaling out your thoughts. Um, I think it's really difficult for people in our lives to understand that we're actually building a business. So um, I think that's one of the big contributors to online entrepreneurship loneliness is that we're building an intangible, intangible empire, right? People can't see it. They can't touch it. No one in our real life understands it. They can't see it. They don't get why hitting your page view goal is a big deal. Um, they don't get why you get so like amped up the first time you make an affiliate sale or what an affiliate is, right? And to see others and be seen and understood by others, that's like a basic human need. We need that shit. <laughs> There, there is some sort of endorphin high, dopamine high. Some We get some sort of serotonin or something, some sort of chemical release in our bodies out of being understood by others and understanding others and making that emotional connection. And it's really, really easy to never get that as an online entrepreneur or get it very seldomly, right? Yeah, they don't get it because they've never made passive income, right? Well, and before I started blogging, I didn't know what an affiliate was. I had no clue how bloggers made money. Um, I'd never taken an online course, I mean, outside of college, you know, I mean, there's really no reason for them to know. <laughs> yeah, right. Rebecca says, I was so excited to tell my husband about my last launch conversion rate. He had no idea what I was talking about. 100%. Yes. Um, we all crave that validation, right? And that doesn't mean anything bad about us. We're human. If you are solely relying on external validation to 
delegate your self-worth. And that's another conversation. That's not what we're talking about here. We're decide we're talking about the basic human desire to be understood, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I do have a couple of solutions for this. First is to try to present your wins and losses to your friend in real life friends and family in a way that they can understand. I know it's a pain in the ass to explain what you do over and over and over and still have them not quite get it. <laughs> I know how frustrating that is. And I know what it's like to encounter people and they're like, well, what do you do? And you're just like, oh, not this again. Like I have to explain again just for them to not get it. I'm challenging you that there is a more relatable way to explain our wins, our losses and what we do to other people. Now with your losses, I will caution you that there's not not every person is somebody you should share your losses with right if you have a family member that's already super critical of your online business and thinks you're making a huge mistake that's not the person to try and relate your losses to right <laughs> don't go to that person right if they're just going to use it as ammo against you regardless of what their intentions are but everyone can understand the joy of setting a goal and hitting it. And on the flip side, everyone can understand the frustration of setting a goal and not hitting it. Right? So try this one on for size. Uh, your friend, partner, family member, whatever. I'm frustrated because I set a goal and I didn't make it and I need a pep talk. Again, careful who you say this to. <laughs> If you know that's the the family member that's dogging your online business all the time, then they don't they don't get to be that person that they don't get the privilege of being that person that you you turn to for that. But I think most partners, I would hope, if you tell them like, hey, I set a goal, I didn't hit it, and I'm just kind of feeling down and I need like a pep talk, I bet they'll rally. Or at the very least, they'll understand, right? Even if, even if they don't, Vic's not great at pep talks. He's not good at feelings. He gives me like a buck up kiddo, <laughs> right? But he can understand what it's like to be disappointed. Um, or uh, I'm super excited because I set a goal and I crushed it. Like we, we get really in the weeds with the details. Like I, I wanted to convert at 15% and my landing page converted at 50%, right? And then we're frustrated that they don't have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> um, I'm challenging you to put it in a more human way that everyone can understand. Good morning, Willow. How are you? Uh, on the, the next solution for this, because that's honestly, it's not enough, right? that that's good that will get you more than you have right now right connecting a little bit with your in real life friends and family over this thing that you're building they see it as imaginary and for you it's very real <laughs> but they'll never really understand it right because they're not risk deep in it like we are you need blogging friends there is no substitute for it you gotta have blogging friends the thing about this is it's not going to happen passively. It will not just fall in your lap. Yeah, Rashonda says the glassy eye stare. That's what I usually get. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. 100%. Um, so I think if we if we talk less about like, I don't know, page views and more about like, hey, I hit a goal. I, I think that'll make it more relatable. Anyway, um, but that's not going to be enough. You need people that you can immediately tell your feelings to without rewording it and finessing it into a way they understand and they'll immediately understand you and give you that 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 sense of being understood right away that is necessary it really is yeah paulette says blogging friends are absolutely the only way to make it through yep willow says you have to have a community of blogging friends yes and that's what i'm about to say 
um, on to Rebecca's point about them being very busy, you got to have multiple blogging friends. <laughs> Bloggers are busy people. Uh, sure, you can have one blogging friend, but they're not they're not gonna be, you know, they're gonna be off doing their own thing, right? You gotta have a community. It's not gonna happen overnight and it's not gonna happen passively. You have to put yourself out there. Join a mastermind, go to co-working sessions, set up co-working sessions. You guys can use my group to network. If you guys want to co-work, set up a co-working session with people. If you are frequently interacting with somebody in the comments that you think you could be a blogging friend with, DM them. <laughs> the worst that's going to happen is they don't reciprocate, right? In which case you can go watch my live last week on rejection. Yeah. Amy says, I just told Clyde I'm going to say a bunch of stuff right now and you just need to be excited for me. Yes, I love that. People can understand that, right? Like, I I just, I need you to be excited about this thing that means a lot to me right now. Or I need you, I need you to be upset with me about this. <laughs> or I need a pep talk, right? Everybody can understand that. Rebecca says, my biz bestie gave up her biz in the last year, but luckily she understands the things I say. Yeah, that's awesome, right? I mean, it's not awesome that she gave it up. I mean, I hope that was a happy decision for her. But um, it, it, having somebody who's been there is so important. There's really no, there's no substitute for being able to send somebody a screenshot of your win and have them immediately get it or send somebody a screenshot of that crappy mean email some rando on the internet just sent you and have them know what it's like to be on the receiving end of that there's no substitute for that and you're gonna have to be proactive to find those blogging buddies i'm missing i'm missing the comments here you guys <laughs> Rashana says i need to find some blogging buddies yeah use my group I'm serious. Use my group. So if you guys don't know, co-working is when people get together on Zoom and they'll like work for like 20 minute stretches or 25 minute stretches. And then they'll talk for like five minute stretches or something like that. Um, I don't co-work because it just adds to my ADHD. But I know a lot of people have a lot of success with co-work. Not only do they find blogging friends, but they get a lot done. <laughs> win, 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 win. Uh, yeah. Okay. Paulette says I pay for Zoom, so I'd be willing to use it for co-working. Yay! Uh, Paulette, she'll host co-working. Oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah, she wanted a different life direction. Good. I'm glad it was a positive uh, decision for her to give up her biz. Because men, yeah. Oh, Willow says 25 minute work, five minute chat. I love it. Rashonda says my mastermind membership is up at the end of the month, but I don't think I'm renewing it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I don't, it's kind of like therapists, which might tell you guys more about me than, <laughs> you know, but it's kind of like therapists. Sometimes you got to try a whole bunch of them on before you find one that fits right. When you're joining a, a like mastermind group. Um, and then also sometimes you outgrow them. Right. And that doesn't mean anything about you. That doesn't mean anything about, the group or the therapist that just means it, it wasn't the right fit at that time right you got to try on a whole bunch of different hats before you find the right one for you which means proactiveness when we like making friends as an adult is weird enough <laughs> right it, when you were in high school like social situations just kind of happen they just kind of form themselves and you can be pretty passive about it and inadvertently end up in social situations that's not the truth as an adult and it's certainly not the truth as an online entrepreneur you got to be super proactive about this stuff it's not going to fall in your lap oh willow says i'm starting co-working sessions twice a day Monday. Yay. Awesome. Okay. So it seems like we have a lot of uh, interest in co-working. So we'll figure that out and we'll figure out how to make it happen. Make it happen, Captain. Um, so that that's the first thing, right? Fe 
feeling like you're seen and understood that that's like a giant giant contributor to online entrepreneur lonely ship lonely ship loneliness <laughs> is the feeling that you're never really being seen and never really being understood right hi jen good morning I see. Yeah. Uh huh. That makes sense, Rashonda. Finds the mastermind group too distracting, too many shiny objects. Yep. I 100% um, get that because people are posting and they're like, here's what I'm doing and it's working for me. And then you're like, maybe I should go chase that shiny object. I totally get that. Okay. Um, so, part one, you need to be seen heard understood and that's not just going to happen you need to go get some blogging friends <laughs> and we'll work on that i will work on that and then you guys know um we're doing another bloggers book book club in q1 of 22. so that's an opportunity for you guys to make blogging friends too the bloggers book club we pick a book which i was gonna rustle up some options within the next month and then have you guys vote we pick a book. Um, we all read it together. I, I think I did a short book last year and it was like five weeks. We meet once a week and um, we pick a short book. So it's not like totally time consuming. And then we get together and we talk about it on Zoom hosted by yours truly. Um, that would be a really great opportunity to make some blogging friends. Yeah, the book club was fun last year. I, I think I had high hopes at the beginning. I was like, I'm going to do one a quarter, but I just... <laughs> you know, life. Um, anyway. All right. The next problem that, well, let's not call it a problem. The next thing. Yes. I would love that Amy. If you could share some recommendations for me. The next thing that really contributes to online entrepreneurship loneliness is that building a business is super time consuming, super time consuming, building any business, right? Building an online business often means we are shutting ourselves away in a room for hours, days, weeks, months on end. So even we're even socializing less with the people we live with. I certainly do. I mean, I've been at it for years now, but um, I try to think back to what I did before, like with all of my free time before I was a blogger. I'm like, I don't know what I what did I do? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I was likely probably out in the living room, right? More watching, you know, more opportunities to like hang out and watch Dateline with Victor or whatever. And that doesn't happen now because I'm in here. It happens every once in a while, but I have to make it happen. It's proactiveness, right? The loneliness gets compounded by the time consuming nature of building a business. We socialize less in general leading to even more loneliness. And I think that we need to prioritize socializing ourselves and we need to look at it as furthering our business. Yeah, Rebecca says, thank goodness my husband likes his own shows and video games. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no, we, Victor and I are people who need a lot of um, separate time. Like when one of us isn't going to be around for uh, a couple of days or whatever, uh, like we openly rejoice that we get our own alone time. <laughs> and that's why we work, because neither of us take it personally. Um, but everybody needs everybody needs that human connection. Yes. Who said that? Even us introverts need the socialization. Who said that? That was Rebecca, 100%. Yep. <laughs> Paulette says we need the blogger happy hour. Sure, bring it back, girl. Um, where was I? The more healthy you are as a person, physically, emotionally, the healthier your business will be. There is, there's no way around that. It's a direct correlation, seriously. There are certain things I have cut out of my life um, because they were unhealthy for me as a person, but I didn't cut them out of my life until I realized that their, 
the effect they were having on me as a person was affecting how the, the, the health of my business. Right. And that encouraged me to, to get rid of them in my life. <clears throat> the flip side of that is you should add things in <laughs> that are increasing your general health and well-being as a person, and it will benefit your business. I challenge you to show me a person that goes out there and makes nurturing their social needs a priority and not have a positive effect on their business. There are going to be times, yes, when you have a deadline and you have to say no thank you when somebody asks you to do something. Here's what I want you to do. Don't say, and I did this, this is a live example from my, not my last launch, but the launch before that. I had a family member reach out to me that I hadn't seen in a long time and I very much enjoy, and they wanted to go get coffee. It was the week of my launch. It was not a good week. And I said, can I call you after my launch or can I text you after my launch and we can set something up? They said, sure. Guess what I never did? <laughs> I never reached out to them, right? Because then you just get busy with other blogging stuff. There's always something. Make those concrete plans. If you have to say no, thank you, then make concrete plans. Say, you know, I'll be done launching. I'll be done writing this blog post. I'll be done making the sales funnel, whatever you're doing in a week. Can you and I get together next Saturday at 2 p.m. at Compass Coffee Roasters? <laughs> Set concrete plans. Because otherwise we are just going to get busy and we are going to go on to the next thing. And really, really, I would challenge yourself. I would challenge yourself and ask yourself, is this blogging task that I'm doing really that urgent that I'm willing to sacrifice my social well-being for it? Like, I'm really craving some social interaction, but I'm going to forego that to get this blog post out. Really question yourself. If the answer is like, yes, I have to, I have to get this done. Then, like I said, make those concrete plans. But oftentimes the answer is no, right? And it's not like you're not going to do it. <laughs> you will still get it done. Uh, it just, it might be a day late. You know what? No one on your list cares if you publish on Tuesday instead of Monday. No one will notice. Publishing schedules, your audience doesn't know when they are. And if they do, let's say on the off chance, somebody in your audience reaches out to you and they're like, hey, uh, I know you usually post on Mondays and I didn't see the post. When will it be up? That is your opportunity to be super, super relatable with your audience. Like, hey, y'all, um, you know what? I prioritized my mental health and the blog post is coming out on Tuesday instead of Monday this week. I know y'all understand. Thank you so much. Humanize yourself. Or you don't actually don't even have to provide them with a reason. <laughs> You're the boss. Uh, no is a complete answer, okay? Uh, it's important for your soul and your creativity to get out of the house and canoodle with your people. Make those human connections. And Julia Cameron talks about this a lot in the artist way. She talks about going on artist dates. It's a date with yourself where you go do something you normally wouldn't do. Or just something a little new and exciting, a different experience. So if, you've, if you're not a bowler, go to the bowling alley. Um, if you never go to the museum, go to the... Portland Art Museum. Go do something that is going to be a break from your norm and watch the creative magic that happens. It works wonders. You go do something that is out of your norm, you will become more creative. And the more creative you are in your business, guess what? The more money you will make. <laughs> 100%. Oh, cool. Willow just started reading this. Yeah, this is a wonderful book. This is like, I don't know, like a life-changing book. It really is. Um, 
What other questions you guys got about loneliness? Why can't that be your book club? Sounds restorative for the New Year's. Sure, maybe. We can put it on the um, list for people to vote for, and then we'll see what do you guys want to read. It would be a nice, um, well, it's supposed to be, how long is it supposed to be? Sorry, I'm looking. It's supposed to be, I think, like 12 weeks or something, which would be too long for the book club. But we could always do, like, we could double it up or something. Amy says, yes, because I haven't read it yet. Yeah, interrupt your brain. Who said that? That's a great way to solve problems. Yeah, Paulette says, that's a great way to solve problems. Interrupt your brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking, Paulette. She says, that's a tough book to do. I was in a six-month group for it, and it can get intense. Yeah. Yeah, There's it's kind of shadow worky is what I'm thinking. Although, I mean, so was meant for more, but that one was such, it was such a thin book that it was easy. Um, I mean, we could just do certain parts of it. Like, I could pick and choose certain parts of it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Let's recap. I'm going back through the 733 words I wrote this morning on loneliness, on loneliness and, and blogging. So uh, there are challenge yourself to relay your blogging experience to your friends and family in a more relatable fashion. They don't need to know the dirty details that we really love. <laughs> we super love uh, all those dirty details, right? I mean, as a blogger, there's nothing better than a nice set of data to nerd out on. That will make your family's eyes gloss over real fast. Yeah. But they can, they can, I would hope that they're not a psychopath and could understand that you're happy about something, which means they're happy about it, or you're frustrated and they can understand what it's like to be frustrated. Will I turn that into a blog post? Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah. So this will get embedded. This video will get embedded in a blog post. And then um, usually I do the transcript underneath it, but since I've already typed out 733 words on this, I will, I'll post this underneath it. You use some of the techniques in your group. Oh, from the artist way. That's awesome. So see, yeah, challenge yourself. And then also, I know we all shy away from explaining what we do to people because it's just a pain in the ass. It really is. <laughs> so what I've started telling people is um, I run an online business. That's what I say. Um, because I get asked a lot at the day job. Um, they're like, you know, I don't know, customers notice that I leave at 2 p.m. And they're like, what do you do afterwards? I'll say I run an online business. So I work on my online business in the morning, day job, and then online business in the afternoon. And they say, what do you do? I say something along the lines of I help other bloggers learn to write blog posts via online courses. They can understand most of that. <laughs> Uh, so I found a way to to relay it to them in a way that they can kind of understand most of. It doesn't make them feel stupid for not knowing it. Um, and most of them go, oh, cool. That sounds nice. <laughs> like that, that sounds intriguing, right? See if you can finesse your elevator pitch for what you do in a way that makes it more relatable to other people for your own good. Right. Because it's super frustrating to have that glossy eyed conversation all the time. Um, see, so see if you can get your elevator pitch for what you do down. You can have an elevator pitch that's your actual elevator pitch that you use for people who know what you're talking about. And then you can have the version that is, you know, for laymen that don't understand the, the blogging lingo. Hi, Heather. Good morning. Rashonda says, when I tell them what I do, they always have a bunch of ideas for me. Like I should make artwork and sell it. They totally don't get it. I've given up trying to explain it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's certain things I just don't say anymore because I know that it will lead to like a can of worms where they just, they don't, they don't get it. <laughs> yep. 
Willow says, I've been doing this 15 years and my husband just now is starting to get it. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, they'll never really get it because they're not in it. They will. The only way they would ever really, truly understand it is if they started an online business, too. That's the only way. So it's. I mean, of course, it's on them to try and understand us, but it's also on us to make it a little bit easier for them to understand. And then remember, you got to get yourself some blogging friends. Be proactive. Get yourself out there. Uh, it sounds like we got some co-working sessions brewing in the chat here. So, uh, Willow, I'll DM you afterwards and I'll see what we can do to set up some co-working sessions in my group. DM people. Don't be afraid. You can do it. Put yourself out there. Gosh darn it, you're worth it. <laughs> and prioritize socialization. Treat yourself like a puppy, right? Puppies need socialization. Otherwise, they're going to go up, grow up crabby and like aggressive and not like to be around other dogs. And then you won't be able to take them on a walk without them like snarling at <laughs> at other animals you don't want to be the snarling schnauzer walking down the street yeah but i am afraid to dm yeah i hear you it is scary remember rejection right there's that there's that point where you might get rejected but i mean what's the worst that's going to happen they don't reciprocate right that's the worst and you can survive that because you're a badass 100%. And being in your energy is a privilege. If they can't see that, that's their problem. Rebecca says, what I will say is that my husband was really supportive when I had a recent meltdown. His mom is a big businesswoman, brick and mortar. And he said that she had, even she had breakdowns, which made me feel so much better. Oh, that is really sweet. Good husband. Oh, Yep. Heather says my hubs is clueless and glass eyed too. He's a seventh grade special ed teacher. So online business way out there for him, but he is supportive the best he can. Yeah. Victor too. He's like, I don't get it, but good job. <laughs> yeah. Willow says my DMs are always open. Otherwise the only people I have to talk to are six wild children. Yes. Thank you. And let me tell you, Willow's a hoot. If y'all are ever bored. <laughs> You just slide into Willow's DMs. I promise you, she will not disappoint. Uh, yeah. So don't be that sh that snarling schnauzer walking down the street. Prioritize your prioritize building in social time for yourself. Your business will be better as a result of it. Don't look at it as I should be working on my business right now. Look at it as what benefits me benefits my business 100%. And it doesn't matter how introverted you are. You need human interaction at some point, <laughs> right? Does not matter. You got to go get that humanness. Oh, Rebecca Forst was nice enough to accept my friend request. I love you guys. Y'all are the best. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other questions about loneliness as a blogger? Lonely, they call me Mr. Lonely. Do you guys remember that song? It's like from the 50s or 60s. Yeah, Rebecca says I can't just re rely on my guinea pigs. <laughs> I mean, that's better than nothing. Furry little potatoes, for sure. They're adorable. But yeah, I mean, they're not going to understand what an affiliate sale is. Although they might understand just as much as... <laughs> just as much as some of our spouses. All right, friends, I hope this helps. Um, you can always, always, always do some sort of networking in my group. I will never shut that down, right? If you need, like, if you need a strong blogging friend network and you want to use my group to um, start a co-working session or even if, I mean, I've seen people in groups um, just be like, hey, I need like a, a group of friends that I can tell blogging stuff to or entrepreneur stuff to who's interested. And you watch like people will people will be like me, 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 me. We are all craving it and we're all afraid to ask for it. <laughs> 
Yep, I did just say furry little potatoes. <laughs> That's part of my blog's tagline. I love it. That's so cool. Focus Me is free. I just joined. What's Focus Me? Is that like a co working thing? Yeah, you guys can always use my group to network. And honestly, guys, I don't let people who aren't nice stick around in my group. If somebody's mean in our group, um, they get the boot. So it's, it's pretty safe space. <laughs> pretty safe space. If anybody's mean to you, um, they're they're getting they're getting the boot. Um, you know, open discussion where people are like disagreeing with each other is one thing. Being mean is another. They're they're gonna get the axe. Willow says it's a co-working thing, but it's a stranger. Oh, okay. Focus me. I actually think maybe you told me about that before, Willow. Okay, friends, my, I don't know if you can hear my cat is howling outside my door right now. <laughs> He's mad because he likes to potty outside, but it's raining. So this is what we do for eight months in the Pacific Northwest. He just howls. He's just upset. Okay. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being vulnerable. Rebecca, thank you for the awesome question. Um, thanks for being brave and asking. It obviously uh, affects us all really heavily. Look out for co-working opportunities. I'm going to get with Willow. We're going to see if we can set something up. Look out for the Bloggers Book Club. I'll get together some recommendations. Maybe I'll start a thread for book recommendations. And then after the thread, I'll start a poll. That's what we're going to do. Alrighty, friends, have a great Thursday. I'm sure I will see you soon. If you need anything from me at all, let me know. Tag me in the group. Bye.